really was only until Alejandro really came aboard and, and made this screenplay his own and really became attached to the material and this epic journey of, of survival and, and, and the way he wanted in, to shoot it where it became an exciting prospect for me because he really is a unique filmmaker. He's really one of a kind and I knew it would take that kind of a type of director that gives you that truly immersive experience as an audience member. He's really de developed his own approach and his own style to making movies throughout the years that has become synonymous with only him now. And there's very few filmmakers out there that I believe can do that, that really um, can make a, a, a true mark and not sort of um, fit into the sort of Hollywood mold and, and, and accomplish films like this on, at an, on, an, on an epic scale. His process is very unique. Not many filmmakers do what he does. And it's a lot of it's trial and error. And a lot of it has to do with uh, Chivo, who is a cinematographer, who's really, you know, um, intrinsically a part of his process. And those two uh, really immerse themselves in the material. There's an, a, a very extensive rehearsal period where all the actors get together and we sort of coordinate these very complex movements and shots. I think what they quite uniquely achieve is, especially and in particular in this film, is this almost virtual reality where you really feel like you're out in the elements with these characters. You really feel immersed in their lives, but he's also able to, you know, have that camera move all the way through the wilderness but stop at a, a very intimate moment with the character and explore that moment and then travel on. So you, you almost feel like some strange uh, delusional wanderer um, watching all this chaos ensue and, and you get the visual perspective of this, uh, of, of a character in the movie almost. But it's, um, it's very subconscious, it's very, um, it's not something that's overt, and that's, to me, the best and most interesting thing about their process, because that's what you want as, a, as, a, as an audience member. You want to be able to immerse yourself in an entirely different world. Hugh Glass is, you know, stuff of legend by, you know, the American campfires. He's, he's, he's a, a, a real-life Paul Bunyan type of character, a man that survived extreme elements and was left to die by his, his uh, hunting crew and buried alive and crawled through the, the entire American wilderness on his own through uh, hundreds of miles, through the dead of winter, uh, to sort of seek, this re seek revenge on, on the men that had, had done him wrong. So he's this sort of part of American folklore, but he was a real person and these things really did happen. But I think more than anything, what Alejandro wanted to do was create poetry in that story, the, the poetry of what it means to have all the chips stacked against you, to have really very little chance at survival and the, the sort of triumph of the human spirit and what we can endure and what we go through and what, what Hugh Glass realizes on that journey and whether revenge is ultimately the thing, the thing that will quench his thirst at the end of the day. The unique set of um, challenges that he has as a father and his son has growing up in an environment like that is, is something that is an undertone throughout the rest of the movie. It's never overt, it's never spoken, but you, you, you get the essence that these people need to remain quiet, they're, they're isolated, and they're, they're alone in this world. And so the father-son bond and the movie becomes a very powerful thing because he needs to teach his son to sort of disappear, to not be there, to, you know, just keep your head down and focus on what you need to do. And so he is essentially somebody that is working with fur trappers to, to earn a living, to survive, but, you know, there's a lot of racial conflict already starting to brew. And his whole objective with his son is, look, you know, we have this will to survive, you know, 
we're going to push through it no matter what. And these are things that he instills in his son at a very early age um, through a lot of tragedy. And these same messages that he's trying to instill in his son are things that he needs to ultimately realize for himself when he's left alone in the middle of the wilderness um, with very little chance to survive.